sometimes the more unscientific the guests are, the more show busy they are, the more credibility it actually gives you for what you're talking about, doesn't it? In, yeah, in a way, I mean, it's, it's that... I think the idea that there are these people who are interested in science, interested in nature. And, you know, when I find this, you know, if I go to the, to the pub or I go into a school, anyway, then people are naturally interested in these big questions. And that's ultimately what this musical is about. So well, but, but questions don't get much bigger than how does Santa deliver presents all around the world in one night? Well, that's what every child will be asking its parents and none of us know how to answer yeah. that question. Well, Einstein gave us the answer in 1905, his special theory of relativity. What Einstein told us, which is true, is that as you get closer to the speed of light, you go faster and faster, then distances shrink. So the distance between, let's say this Santa's going round the globe now, so he starts off in, let's say, up here in Canada, and he goes whizzing across mm. to Europe. Now, that's however many, you know, 3,000 miles or something. But if you're going very close to the speed of light, let's say 99.999999% of the speed yeah. of light, distances shrink, mm -hmm. in that case, by a factor of 7,000. So 7,000 miles is one mile when you're travelling close to the speed I'm of light. I'm getting that itch. And that, that's Galpy really thing true. Like I'm in a that, that is really true. Now. So if cause and effect can actually be swapped around, are you actually saying to me that we're talking about time travel here? Ah, uh, well, that's very insightful and, and no, because cause and effect can't be swapped round. Mm -hmm. What happens is, you, if you could go faster than the speed of light, you could do that. You can't, but you don't, Santa doesn't need to, because as, as he gets closer and closer to the speed of light, distances shrink to almost zero. I think you're wrong, Professor. I saw an episode of Star Trek <laughs> once, and they were able, in the Enterprise, they were able to go back in time by going faster than the speed of light. But I, I just pick you up on that. Can you do, explain? It's not a documentary. OK, so. right, right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now, what about you? So there was me reading in the, uh, the newspapers at the weekend, and they were saying, the must-see concerts. Brian Cox is going on tour, right? But you can't get a <laughs> ticket out. for love nor money. Your tickets on the black market are selling for more than an Adele ticket. I, I know, and I, I just want to say, actually, because I'm doing some more in May, uh, some extra... We're doing Wembley wow. Arena, Cosmology at Wembley. Th there Have are you done tickets. Wembley Arena before? No, no, uh, so that really will be quite one. a remarkable... But there are tickets available, um, so it, it's not sold out. And it, th I've seen that. There's a big article, actually, I think, in The Times on Sunday about tickets you said for Adele and other people. The point is that you ring the venue, because the venues very often have tickets available. So I think that's a... It's the only piece of advice I'd and what give. Do you, but... What do you do on the tour? Can people ask you questions? I mean, you, are you on the stage? Yeah, we do a Q&A, which is... A, I, I just finished a tour. I did Hammersmith last, uh, a couple of weeks ago. So when you've got thousands of people, they'll ask any questions, and it's quite... That's quite nerve-wracking, actually. you still get questions actually. that you haven't you can... heard? Does it still surprise you? Every time. So there's one... You? Right, here's one. What's the difference between the North Star and the Star of Bethlehem? Are they the same thing? Uh, no. no, no. The Star of Bethlehem, so that's this, the idea something happened in the sky uh, when, when Jesus was born. And there's lots of, actually, astronomers, there's a, there's a whole field of study where you go back in time and say, what could it have been 2,000 years ago? One theory is it was Halley's Comet, ah, which comes around every... Ah. That came around, I think it was 12 BC, so it's not... You know, it's not quite there, but you don't know. Another one is that there was an exploding star in, in the nearby galaxy, the Andromeda Galaxy, which you can see, actually, with the naked eye at the moment on a clear night, even though it's two and a half million light years away. Two and a half million? Two and a half million it. light years, but it's 400 billion stars in that galaxy. And you can see it on a dark night without the moon in the winter now with the naked eye, and you certainly see it with binoculars. So it could have been an exploding star in that galaxy. Um, could have been some planets getting close to each other, which happened quite a lot. Yeah. So it's some significant event mm. in the sky. Brian, when you were here last year and we were talking to you, you had a significant Christmas tree at home. You had a Darth Vader, had you not, Christmas yeah. tree, a black <laughs> Christmas tree last year. Because my little boy's seven now, and, and he was into Star, so into Star Wars last year, so we had a Darth Vader Christmas tree. This so what's year, this year's theme? Sherlock. <gasps> Yeah. You know, we've got oh, Mrs. Watson coming in today. I just, uh, it's, yeah. yeah, and I, I, I can't say anything. I, I've seen it, and it's, a, it's amazing, and that's all I can say. We were threatened. Mark Gatiss, who wrote it, literally yeah. threatened us with, uh, with death, actually, <laughs> if we said anything Doesn't about it at all. As a so fact, not, things I can only get better as a bad month yeah. sign. Yes. <laughs> so, Gosh. But I can tell you now, it's, it's a brilliant well. episode. Hello YouTube. For more of the same, just click here and don't forget you can subscribe for even more of these amazing videos exclusive to our channel.